Okay, so in this podcast, I want to discuss a common question that comes up is like, which thyroid hormone replacement works best? What you have to understand is there really isn't the best thyroid replacement, and there's some issues with all types of replacement. And what you have to figure out is what are those issues and how do you identify them for yourself? So those are some of the things that I want to cover in this podcast. Now, I would also start off by saying if you're actually hypothyroid, you have laboratory confirmation you're hypothyroid, uh, meaning your TSH levels are high, you really need to be on replacement. Because if you're not on thyroid replacement and you're in this low thyroid state and you're in it for many, many years, lots of health problems can take place. So you have to understand your, your thyroid hormones control your metabolic rate. They modulate your immune system. They calm down inflammation. They help your body recover. So if you've been in a thyroid hormone deficiency state for a long period of time, you can promote mechanisms that that accelerate neurodegeneration, right? So brain inflammation activity goes up in a hypothyroid state. Neurotransmitter connectivity, synaptic responses go down. Um, protein aggregation, the things that lead to things like Alzheimer's disease from um, beta amyloid plaques, they go up in a hypothyroid state. Gastrointestinal system function goes down. You lose the ability to make enzymes, to have proper motility. So you get prone to having constipation and and gallstone issues and and impaired uh, blood flow to the gut. And you can get things like intestinal permeability and abnormal microbiomes just from being thyroid hormone deficient. You can have bone density, bone quality issues. There's a whole host of health concerns that can happen. So if you're hypothyroid, you really want to figure out uh, which thyroid hormone works best for you and what are some of the issues with different types of thyroid replacement. You got to be careful of people that always believe you should take thyroid hormones a certain way. Like there's some people that think you should always only take bioidentical or some people, theories out there that bioidentical doesn't work. It's not that effective. You should only take synthetic T4 or there's even the realities of what is your insurance plan cover and you know how do you address those things? So when you look at um, reactions and, and response to the thyroid hormones, there's a few things you need to understand. First of all, number one, and probably most important, you're not going to just go on thyroid replacement and every single symptom you've ever had is going to go away. That just does not happen. So one of the problems we have is that some people think, okay, well, I've been diagnosed hypothyroid. Now I got my thyroid replacement. Since all my symptoms are not gone, I must need more or I must need a different type. Then they go on this journey, sometimes even for years, where they're switching from one type to another type to another type, adding more, uh, then having adverse reactions like severe insomnia, anxiety for taking too much thyroid hormones. And then even sometimes even they get thyroid resistance. They take so much thyroid hormones, their thyroid actual receptor sites shut down and they, I get, they get much worse. So you have to realize that you're probably not going to get rid of all of your symptoms with thyroid replacement because hypothyroidism is caused by Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune risk disease, and thyroid hormones alone are not going to reverse that autoimmune response. That autoimmune response is destroying the thyroid gland, but it's also causing significant inflammation throughout the body that's not going to be addressed by just taking thyroid hormones. And the Hashimoto's autoimmune response is going to be associated with loss of immune tolerance. So your immune system will start to react to food proteins. You start to get lots of food sensitivities and reactions from foods. You'll start to react to environmental chemicals. You'll become much more sensitive to um, the environment than ever before. And then you can get autoimmune reactions in other areas of your body, except in addition to your thyroid gland, and they can cause their own symptoms. So if you're just trying to figure out what type of hormone replacement is right for you, based on it getting rid of all your symptoms, you're never going to get there. So you have to realize it's just the key thing sometimes is do the thyroid hormones you're taking, get your lab test back in the normal reference range, and are they not causing any adverse symptoms for you? Because there are some people that go on certain thyroid hormones and some get severe anxiety and nervousness, some get more inflammation, and and majority of people just feel fine, but there are those individual uniqueness, unique responses. So when you're looking at thyroid hormones, there's basically um, a couple choices, uh, or not a couple, but there's a few categories of choices. So one of them is just your, you know, brand, you know, brand name or generic, and those don't really matter too much. Uh, but we have uh, synthetic hormones and bioidentical. 
one of the things you have to understand about bioidentical hormones is that bioidentical hormones contain both types of thyroid hormones, always, every single one of them. They contain both T4 and T3. And the problem with some bioidentical hormone for some people is that uh, T3 is very stimulating. And there are some people that cannot handle any bioidentical sources because they just can't handle the T3 in there. And uh, there isn't a bioidentical only T4 source. So remember, T4 is not as metabolically active as T3. And the most common the most common type of replacement for people that have hypothyroidism is actually a T4 only thyroid hormone like L-thyroxine, level thyroxine. Those are the most common ones. And they provide them with T4 and they allow their body to adjust how much T3 their body needs to convert or produce to avoid people getting really nervous and having anxiety and over metabolic responses with it. So for some people, they need that extra T3 to function better. So they do do better with a bioidentical because it's not just L4, which is the common level thyroxine, L-thyroxine, most prescribed medication that's used. They need that extra T3. So they they will swear that bioidenticals are the hormone that they really need and that's where they function well with, but it's that individual unique response. But there are those that can't handle the T3, like I was saying. And, and what happens with them is their autoimmune disease, their Hashimoto's is still flaring up and still active all the time. So their autoimmunity is still destroying the thyroid gland. Then those thyroid hormones get released in the bloodstream. Those thyroid hormones get released in the bloodstream. That increases their metabolic rate. And now they add more actual, very active T3 into their system, and that's too much. And now they just get shakes, and now they can't sleep. And it's a problem for them. So that's another issue with it. So it's not just about being bioidentical or synthetic. Um, it's just, it's also about, are you getting a T4, T3 combo, which is what all bioidentical hormones are, or are you just getting T4, or are you getting T4 that allows your body to convert it? So that's that's one issue. Now, the conventional model is to basically diagnose someone with hypothyroid and give them a T4 source and see if see if they work, right? So the, the typical scenario is patient comes in with clinical symptoms of hypothyroidism, their thyroid stimulating hormones are above the lab range, then... Um, they get diagnosed hypothyroid. They never run the antibodies to see what happens to them. They, then they get put on level uh, L4 therapy, level thyroxine therapy, and they come back in here and they see if their levels are normal. And for some people, that can work fine. For other people, there's some problems with this. So one of the problems is um, they don't, you know, the person has their thyroid gland destroyed faster in a year. So one of the big problems is just getting tested every year. So you may need to get tested sooner than a year. Another problem is maybe the maybe the L4, the monotherapy level thyroxine, isn't really working for, for, for you, that you actually need that T3, T4 combination. And maybe there's some issues with the absorption, some fillers. So I'm gonna go over some of the key things that are involved with to kind of figuring out what, what what's important for finding the right type of thyroid replacement and what some of these issues are. And we're going to start with, should you just be on T4 or should you take a T4, T3 combo? So there's some healthcare professionals that that will use a T4, T3 combo. So they may use level thyroxine as like a prescribed uh, synthetic type of T4 as a way to uh, support function. And then they may also use something like Thyrolar, uh, or um, the, it's a T3, T4 combination uh, to help with uh, increasing their, their thyroid responses uh, of that way. So there's also Cytomil, which is really popular, which is a T3 only source. So there's some like physicians that will put someone like on, uh, in addition to like T4 like level thyrox, and they also put them on cytomeal, so they get four T4, well, they get T4 and T3, and they prefer that because it's synthetic. And some physicians believe synthetic sources are more specific to the actual dosages, and and bioidenticals have gone a bum rap because they feel like they can't get bioidentical levels exactly the right dosage, and there's some issues with that. And that over time has been disproven by many studies that have been done on bioidentical sources. Um, 
but it continues on, right? So things like armor, which is a bioidentical West thyroid, nature thyroid, and P thyroid, those have all shown they clearly have the exact dosages, but there are still preferences for the synthetic uh, hormones. But whether it's synthetic or whether it's bioidentical, what I want to first talk about is should you just use T4 or should you just use T3? The theory about just using T4 is that let's give you T4, and since your thyroid isn't working and you can't make it, and since the thyroid gland mostly produces T4, 90% and greater amounts of actual thyroid hormone production is T4, we'll get that T4 in you, and then your body can convert it into the active form T3 as it needs to, and since it's not just T3, it's less likely that you'll get anxious and nervous with it. So that's the most common type of therapy. And the thing with T4 therapy is that it's covered by insurance. It's the, pervert, it's the preferred source by physicians. And for most people, it's, it's, it's more tolerable because T3 can be very, very stimulating. Now, for the T3, T4 combination, the pros and cons are, first of all, it's T3 and T4 combinations, however it's done, whether it's bioidentical synthetic, it's typically not covered by insurances. So you, people have to go outside that to make a change. It's the only option for bioidenticals. Um, but one of the benefits is that it, for some people that can't convert their T4 hormones to T3 or need extra thyroid hormones, that may be what really works for them. But for other people, that T3 that that T3 and that combination could be very overstimulating for them. So those are the, the main issues. And this is why it's so important because sometimes when you work with healthcare professionals or, or work with a physician that provides replacement, they're just fixated on their type. Like you may just have someone say, oh, I only prescribe a, a T4 level thyroxin. I don't do any of the other stuff. And that might not be the right approach for you. Or you could go and work with someone like an alternative uh, MD or uh, a naturopath that prescribes in your state. And they will say, I only use armor. I only use bioidentical. I would never use... T4 that's synthetic because I want you to have exactly what the body has, but you can't handle T you can't handle the T3 and the bioidentical, and then you feel worse. So those are the real issues that come up. Now, there's also the issues between synthetic uh, and bioidentical, just personal philosophies practitioners have and people have for their system that needs to be accounted for. And then sometimes some people have issues with thyroid fillers. So you have to understand that um, thyroid hormones have things like modified food starch, which is gluten in there. They have dextrose in there. They have dyes. They have mannitol. They have, uh, you know, cornstarch uh, and sucrose and different compounds that are all there to kind of keep that thyroid hormone fixed together, kind of like filled and stuck. But many people have reactions to them. So in, in the, the key clinical finding of someone that has reaction to fillers is typically a scenario where like they forget to take their thyroid hormones. So they go on vacation and uh, what will happen with them is they'll feel better. So they went somewhere and forgot to take thyroid hormones for a day or two and they feel better. They come back, take the hormones and they feel awful again. And they're not feeling anxiety or nervousness. They're just feeling blow. They're just feeling swollen and fatigued and tired. And they start to notice that when they don't take their thyroid hormones, they actually feel better with 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 their energy levels and their inflammation. And that's a very strong indication that they're reacting to the fillers. And over the years, this has become more and more of an issue with uh, patients suffering from hypothyroidism. To the point now, they have a gel capsule called Tyrosent. So Tyrosent is a thyroid hormone spelled T-I-R-O-S-I-N-T. The reason they made a gel capsule is because gels don't require fillers. Only tablets require fillers. So gels are kept together by gelatin. And uh, they found that many people that were very sensitive to thyroid filters could, could do well with tyrosine. Now tyrosine is a T4 only source, but that could be something that they do well. And then what they found later on was you know what? Some people with Hashimoto's are so immune reactive that they're actually reacting to the gel capsule that they need to get a form of, of thyroid hormones with them that doesn't have any gel capsules. So then they made something called Tyrosent SOL, SOL, which is liquid solution. So there's a liquid solution where they basically just have a dosage, they cut it, and they just basically drink it. And then that allows them to give them the actual uh, liquid thyroid hormone but without any of the gelatin compound that would normally be found in gel capsules. So there's people that have those issues with those 
those fillers as well. So those are the, the main types of reactions that can determine what kind of thyroid uh, hormone can be work for you. So whether it's T4 or T3, whether you can handle T3, whether you have a personal philosophy with the synthetic versus bioidentical, whether you may react to the fillers or not, uh, those are all the things that you have to factor out to really figure out which type of thyroid hormone replacement is best for you. Now, we go into this with more detail and some greater depth of discussion in a course that I developed called Hashimoto Solving the Puzzle. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out Dr. K News, drknews.com. Um, you have all the information there. And thank you for listening to this podcast.